Hey everybody, this is TJ with ShopBot Tools. In today's online training, we're going to look into starting points and Z heights. So by default, when you zero out your X and Y proximity switches, the tip of that bit starts at your zero, zero location. So being that it starts here, also by default, it will finish here. The problem with it finishing where it started is, now you want to take off your material, and your sharp bit is right over where you need to be, and you need to now use your keypad and move it out of the way, because it's in your way. So let's take a look at a file in the drawing software. I set this up for a ShopBot desktop, 24 inches by 18 inches. You can see down here that my board that I'm about to cut is stationed off the bottom left, 00, zero um, in the Vectric VCarve or Aspire software. And just to show you where this is, up here on the toolpath side, there is something called a home position. And by default, if I look in here, it is 0, 0 for your X and your Y. And then you will have a Z gap above material, and that's what we'll cover next. But right now we're looking at the home slash start slash finish position, because whatever your start is is also going to be the finish position. So that's where it went back to 0, 0. Now in the case of this next example, what I want to do is I'd like this, instead of finishing at 0, 0, I'd like it to go over, say, 12 inches and then say back 12 inches so it goes out of my way or somebody might want to have it go completely out of the way and say 24 inches by 18 inches so let me just show you an example here of what happens if you change this home slash start position now create your tool path and when you save it you'll see about what it's going to do right here next so first let me show you the default zero zero that's before we change it. Ouch, I go to reach my hand under there, I'm gonna get cut. I gotta move my keypad now to get it out of the way. That takes time. So, look at this. That's now with it changed. It goes back to that setting that I set up. Conveniently goes out of your way so you can pull that piece off. So that's one way of doing things. And as with most things in the different softwares, there's multiple ways of achieving what it is that you wanna do. So. For someone that doesn't want to mess with the, stone, the home start position and the drawing software, there's another way, and that's doing it through the ShopBot controller software. Why would somebody not want to do this? Well, think about you know us at ShopBot, who some days are using a desktop, which is a 24-inch by 18-inch, and then another time I'm using a 96 by 48. So if I was to set my home position to 96 inches by 48 inches, and then I forget to change it, and then I go and use a desktop at 24 inches by 18 inches in size, that home position it tries to go to is going to crash. So we'll minimize our CAD software and bring up our control software. In this case, we have ShopBot 3 up. And what we're looking to do here is use the keypad. Uh, shortcut key on the keyboard is K, or you can click on the little yellow box right here. There's your keypad. And what we have here along the bottom is five memorized locations. So right now, if I was to right click on spot number one, I could make this the finish spot of wherever I desire. The trick with doing it this way is you actually need to move to where it is that you want to have as your ending or finish spot. Now I'm at zero, zero. That's not going to do me any good because that's where the software already, the drawing software is already defaulting. So I'm typing in my 24 by 18, say I'm on a desktop here, and I, I would hit go to, and it would go to that position. And then that's where I make my spot one. Uh, I could also make it 48, 48, 96, 48, wherever it is. Some people like to also have their zeroing of their Z, of their bit in certain spots, say 5 comma 5. So regardless of whatever spot that you're doing, you get five of them. And in this case, I went to 2418, and on my desktop, this spot right here would be called my desktop ending location. And I hit OK. And now no matter where I'm at on the table, say I moved wherever my part finishes, at any time I can just hit K on the keyboard right here by typing in K, brings up keypad, and then I hit the number 1, or I click on 1, 
and it will go to that spot. Now what it does say with something like when you're doing it this way, it says one or more of your vertical axis is below safe z height. Are you sure you want to continue? And that's because I have a quarter inch of a z here. So it's below my safe z, which is what we'll be getting into in just a moment is setting safe z. So all I'm doing is looking across my table and saying, you know what, I'm a quarter inch up above my z. I don't have any clamps or anything sticking up so yes it is okay to go and it will then go ahead and move to that position if I was above my safe Z height and I was at a location like this that's not where it needs to be and I hit one it will just automatically go there so it is really nice to have that error message or warning message if you want to call it that come up and say hey are you sure you want to continue just a way to help save bits uh, really is a useful feature so there is another way of moving to a ending spot or finish or start spot depending on what it is that you want to use it for so what we're looking at next is safe z heights so optimally we want it to be up above our material at a safe distance it's not going to hit the screw heads or clamps but you also don't want to lift it up so high that it actually takes longer to make the cut. Because notice how high this thing lifts up in between cuts. We're right around a quarter of an inch. So watch it gets done making this cut. It lifts up a quarter of an inch. It goes back to the next start point. The more distance we have as a safe Z height, the longer this machine takes to go up and down and travel in between cuts. So let's look into that a little bit further. There's two sets of Z heights adjustments that we need to look at. One is in the control software and one is in the CAD software. The one in the control software can be found underneath values, cutter values. So I'm in the ShopBot 3 control software, values, cutter values. And in here we have something called a safe Z pickup. Now I just want to point out what this is. This height is raised before move home or jog home. One 0.0 is typical value leave blank to disable pull up so there is a little note on there saying what that is so uh, a lot of it, people have it as the default as one I see also see a lot of people change it to half inch and I just want to point out this is the moving of the gantry the bit at a safe Z height above the material but when it's in the shop by software it's only talking about before a move home or before a jog home. In, in other words, what I'm trying to say is this is before or after of you running an actual file. So this safe Z pull-up that you see in the control software, this has to do with before you actually load that file, moving around in keypad mode like we saw earlier, uh, jogging your X and your Y around on the table, this is when you're not running a file. So that can be changed there. So if I wanted to whoops, if I wanted to change that back to default, I could change that to one inch and then hit OK and all that. Now when I go to hit cut part and I go to run a file, that's when the next set of settings are going to take over. And let's bring up the file. Let me, let me show you where that's now what takes over is the settings that you have in your CAD file. So we're looking at the CAD software here now go back to what we did earlier underneath material setup again we're on the toolpath side and we are going down here to where it says rapid Z gaps and clearance so we have our clearance gap and our plunge gap so these are at point two and point two uh, a lot of people I talk to like to leave these right around a quarter of an inch and you can see by the little picture here, Vectric explains what the clearance of Z1 is and Z2. They also have a tutorial about it underneath their video tutorial browser explaining it in more in depth. But these are the two different heights that your clearances and your plunge would be before they retract or go down before they're moving a, 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 across your material. So what I'm trying to point out in this tra training is leaving these shallow like this at a point two you're having less time go up and down here you can lose a lot of time going up and down in your Z now you may need to have a high number if you have clamps 
or you have you know uneven material or obstructions in the way so just to point out the same variables here between two different files on this little card holder here with a clearance of 0.2 and 0.2 um, we have a time to toolpath this at exactly 50 minutes and 42 seconds if I was to go and change this to the a deeper Z height right here instead of it being 50 minutes and 42 seconds same exact settings I can now come over and look at this with a 2 inch clearance so instead of the .2 I've got 2.0 decimal places are everything aren't they and here we can see that it's an hour and two so there's 12 minutes lost of just Z travel up and down up and down and that's not cut time that's just travel time so that, that that's 12 minutes on just a small piece here you know we're only cutting out a couple little small um, you know card holder plaques so that that really could add up over time so if you don't need to have clamps or different things that are going to be in the way underneath material setup it is really nice to have a shallower clearance and a shallower plunge for when it's jumping down into the actual cut um, that's going to save you obviously a lot of time by the example here that we just looked at so let's take a look at this this is ideally what we want here it's running the hole down for that file we just looked at and in between each plunge it's 0.2 so you can see it's a 0.2 above for the retract and it's a 0.2 for the plunge rate so both of those are set the same and then it goes to 2 up and then 2418 is the finish spot now here's what it looks like with the 2.0 there's a lot more time that we're losing right there just going up and down now if we had some clamps or other obstructions or obstacles in the way this would be ideal now it's not ideal for efficient cutting so something like this I would say whoa I'm gonna stop this file and go back and change it because look at this come across the front here how high that is going up above the material there's no need for that so I would like to do the first example of the quarter of an inch and let's finally let's look at look at a V carve where you got a lot of up and down Z movements like this V carve of this text look how much time you lose if it was going up to two inches in between every single one of those plunges so that's why we keep both of those at a quarter of an inch when we can we kept this tutorial today short and sweet and right to the point. So starting points, just remember that you can have different finish points and starting points. You can set it up either with your keypad in the control software or set it up in your design software. Also Z heights are big to make your time more efficient for cutting. If you can, keep it around a quarter of an inch. I wouldn't go any less than that. You get start getting warped material and it could drag that bit across there. If you have clamps and different obstructions in the way, you might want to increase that Z height. So if you enjoyed today's tutorial and you're looking for more, please check out our newly redone website here, especially underneath the training page where you can find different trainings around, both at ShopBot Tools, your part of the country, and there's also other tutorials and videos on, on this website that are much like today. And you can go on there and see those. So thanks for checking us out today and we'll see you next time.